A former driving instructor appeared in court today facing charges of child molestation and sexual battery. He's also accused of using a hidden camera to record his teenage students. Good evening, I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. The 50 year old instructor faces more than 18 years in prison. The CBS 8's David Gopperson reports prosecutors allege there were 11 victims, most of them under 18 years old. Not guilty pleas will be entered, denials to all allegations. 50-year-old Richard Joseph Banks pleaded not guilty in North County Court Tuesday to charges involving teenagers he was teaching to drive. Prosecutors say he planted a hidden camera in at least one of the driving school vehicles and also molested some of his students. He's charged with 33 counts um, involving 11 separate victims of possession and production of child sexual abuse materials, uh, invasion of privacy, sexual battery, uh, and lewd and lascivious conduct on a 14 or 15 year old. If convicted on all counts, Banks faces 18 years, six months in prison. 10 of the 11 alleged victims were minors and investigators believe there could be more out there as he was teaching driving school for the past year. If someone does believe that they have been a victim uh, as a student of Mr. Banks, that we would ask that they contact the San Diego Police Department. CBS 8 has confirmed Banks had no criminal history in San Diego, but in the mid-1990s, he did have a series of criminal cases when he lived in Sweetwater, Texas including commercial burglary, forgery, evading arrest, and filing a false report. Banks was employed by American Driving School in El Cajon. The driving school owner says Banks passed a background check before he was hired. He worked with uh, young people uh, in a career before he came to us. Um, he's a father himself. Police say a teenage girl reported being inappropriately touched by Banks and then when officers served a search warrant on his home in Escondido, they say they found videos that looked like they were recorded with a hidden camera inside the vehicle. Banks will be back in court on Friday for a bail review hearing. If he does get out on bail, the judge ordered him not to have any contact with any of the alleged victims. At the Vista Courthouse, David Goffertson, CBS 8. All right, David, thanks. Today, former National City School teacher Jacqueline Ma pleaded not guilty to sexual misconduct charges with two students. Prosecutors say that messages between Ma and those students describe sex acts and also include explicit photographs. Today's arraignment included enhancements to the initial charges, claiming the alleged acts were committed with victims under duress. Ma faces up to 165 years to life in state prison. Her trial is set to start on April 26th. The San Diego County Water Authority is warning people to watch out for fake water agency workers. This scam involves people knocking on doors or calling by phone, requesting entry to homes and making sales pitches. County officials say this scam reappears every few years. The authority says legitimate employees are always in uniform, carry an ID badge and drive a clearly marked agency vehicle. Tonight we have new information about Walmart's plan to close two of its San Diego stores. You wanted to know why they're shutting down and CBS 8's Shannon Handy has been working for you to get some answers. She joins us live now from El Cajon with details. Shannon. Yeah, Carlo, we first reported on these closures last week, but at the time Walmart was releasing very few details. Tonight, however, the retailer tells us they're closing two locations, this one at Gateway at Parkway Plaza, that is, in El Cajon, as well as their neighborhood market on Imperial in San Diego on February 9th because the stores don't meet the company's financial expectations. At the Walmart neighborhood market in Sherman Heights, we saw a steady flow of customers coming and going Tuesday afternoon. People who live in the area say it's always busy here, so they can't understand why after nearly 11 years in business is closing. This is like the whole neighborhood store. I don't know what we're supposed to do. Inside, signs have been posted announcing the store's last day, February 9th. We also noticed several empty shelves, including in the meat section where everything is 25% off. Once it shuts down, customers will have to travel further to shop. Many worry about that, as well as the added price they'll have to pay in doing so. All these smaller stores are really expensive. They're like liquor slash some grocery. So I don't know where they're going to go. I guess downtown. 
Albertsons downtown, no parking, really hard to get to. This was so convenient. Albertsons is like an arm and a leg for what theirs is for a leg. <laughs> it's the same sentiment in El Cajon, where the Walmart at Parkway Plaza is also shutting down. Here, the entire store is 25% off. I talk to people taking advantage of those deals while they still can. I really don't like it. You know, it's like a family store to a lot of us. So, you know, now we got to find another Walmart on the other side of town. We reached out to Walmart to ask why these two stores are shutting down. In a lengthy statement, a spokesperson explained the decision was made based on several factors. Among them, the store is not performing as well as the company had hoped, and they were unable to reach mutual lease renewals with the property managers. The spokesperson went on to commend the store's employees and acknowledge customers, saying, We are grateful to the customers who have given us the privilege of serving them at our San Diego and El Cajon stores. We look forward to continuing to serve them at any of our many locations across the area on Walmart.com and through a delivery to their home or business. And again, the last day for those two stores is February 9th. But if you want to take advantage of those 25% off deals, I would go sooner than later. Talking from personal experience, I was just inside this location and the line wraps around the entire store. Back to you. Bargain hunters jumping on that. Shannon, we saw the customers you talked to uh, telling about how much it's going to impact them. But what about the employees? What's going to happen to them? Yeah, so the retailer did not say whether or not there's going to be layoffs, but in that statement, they did tell us that all employees are eligible for transfers to other San Diego stores. So hopefully a lot of the people who work here, if they want to stay within the company, they're able to transfer and keep their jobs. Hopefully it's not too much of a drive wherever they're transferred to. Shannon Andy reporting live for us. Thanks, Shannon. And here at CBSA, we want to help solve problems that affect you. If there's something you would like us to look into, you can email us at workingforyou at cbsa.com. And we're looking at new video that reveals a massive homeless encampment full of trash in the Otai River Valley. Firefighters found the spot today after a brush fire started nearby early this morning. There's abandoned plastic, clothes, mattresses, chairs, wooden pallets, and other various debris. As for the fire, police say it was started by someone who was living in that encampment. Chula Vista Fire responded and quickly put the flames out. A retired San Diego fire captain who served more than four decades in the department remains in the intensive care unit. He was rescued from a burning vehicle back in November. CBS 8's Kelly Hesedal spoke with his family and colleagues who say his road to recovery is going to be extremely tough. Tonight, they're asking the community for help. Edward Cardenas uh, dedicated his life to serving as a firefighter. Uh, his daughter Claudia grew up in the firehouse. Uh, she says she followed in her dad's footsteps and became an EMT. Now today she described what it's been like seeing the strongest person she's ever known lying in a hospital bed fighting for his life. Retired San Diego Fire Rescue Captain Edward Cardenas spending time with his grandson. His daughter Claudia says these are the moments she holds on to. I feel like my life is crumbling because my dad's taking five steps forward and three steps back. So you want to, we want to have hope and we, we have faith and we pray. In November, Cardenas suffered a heart attack while in his SUV outside his home. Claudia says he was unconscious, his foot on the gas. He hit a fence, a trailer caught fire. The 41 year veteran of the department was trapped inside the burning vehicle. There was a retaining wall on the left side. So he, even if he wanted to, couldn't get out on the left side. Neighbors rushed to help save him. Fellow firefighters had to cut him from the SUV. Cardenas suffered burns on nearly 40% of his body. He remains in the burn unit at UC San Diego Regional Burn Center. Even just now, I was up there and I told him, I said, Dad, I'm going to go down there and make you proud. And he nodded his head. And I said, you know, I know that you're very private, but like we need, we need to do this to get you what you need. And so he wouldn't let go of my hand. He kept squeezing my hand. Cardenas' colleagues at the fire department say he was always the first to raise his hand to serve. He was a member of Task Force 8, uh, a, a member of a team that went to, uh, you know, the tragic events of 9-11 where the twin, the twin Towers fell. He was there. He went to the Oklahoma City bombing. He went to uh, Hurricane 
Katrina. Cardenas was also a member of Bomberos de San Diego, volunteering his time to train firefighters in Mexico and Central America. Claudia says their family is trying to stay strong and take care of the man who's always taking care of everyone else. My dad uh, is resilient. He's always been a fighter. And, and really, even in this situation, we know he continues to fight. And the family has put together a GoFundMe account uh, to help cover uh, her father's medical expenses. Uh, she says they didn't want to have to reach out to the public, but felt they had no choice. If you would like to donate, just go to CBS8.com and click on this story. Kelly Hassadal, CBS8. Thanks, Kelly. A hair salon in Santee is heavily damaged after a car drove into the building. It happened earlier today at the Fantastic Sam's on Mission Gorge Road. When pulling into the parking spot, the driver says she hit the gas pedal instead of the brakes, with the car driving completely inside the building. You can see in the video she is an older woman. Her husband was riding in the passenger seat. The salon was closed at the time, so fortunately no one was injured. Still ahead, our Verify team turns to the Constitution to fact-check former President Donald Trump. Plus, new images tonight of the world's largest iceberg on the move. That's never a good sign. All right, so in your forecast, we got 58 degrees right now for downtown. You're also talking about high humidity and some light winds and even some fog overnight. Those details are ahead. And up next, why dry January is easier than ever this year. The local bar that wants to keep people on the wagon. 